Hello, welcome to uh, the foremost edition of the much anticipated program, Election Watch, uh, brought to you by your Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. I know since uh, the promo went on air, many of you have been inquiring from me whether or not indeed this show would be predicting the winners and losers of the 2020 elections. And my answer has always been a resounding yes. So we will be predicting the outcomes, uh, losers and winners of the 2020 election right here on Election Watch and your Election Command Centre. I have with me in the studio this afternoon Mr. Mohamed Efum from the Governance Research Bureau to walk us through exactly what the partnership is with the Governance Bureau and your Election Command Centre. <music> Welcome to Election Watch, and Mr. Fum, we're grateful to have you. So I need you to tell us, uh, the viewers across the world and across the country, what exactly the partnership is uh, with the Election Command Center in relation to this program. Thank you very much, Steve. First and foremost, let me uh, speak about what we do. The Governance Research Bureau is a nonpartisan, nonprofit NGO which conducts research into governance issues to aid the policy formulation in the public and private sectors. Uh, we also uh, assist uh, young scholars in the universities with their research work to facilitate their career development. Um, Governor Research Bureau uh, works with resource persons from the universities and other, other research institutions in the area of data collection, analysis, and writing reports, and offering uh, options you know, for policy uh, consideration. Um, over the years, um, we have been doing analysis of the performance of the political parties using certified results from UC since 1992 to predict uh, the successive results. Um, we do this by finding out the performance of the parties in the various regions, especially their strongholds and the swing um, uh, uh, regions, as well as performance in the various constitutions. Uh, in doing that, we are able to determine the quantum of votes that each political party will have to amass or accrue mm -hmm. in order to win in certain uh, 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 constituencies and certain regions. And the fact, of, uh, and the fact that, uh, and, and what determines how they perform in their own stronghold, as well as the strongholds of their competitors. In fact, what we are doing this year is to use data from 19, 20, 2016 elections to predict the outcome of this uh, uh, year. Um, but this data is basically data. Uh, it's quantitative, not uh, qualitative. So, um, but, but we will say that there are other factors that can also swing or determine the outcome in favor of A, B, and C. In the long run, we also uh, uh, want to make prescriptions to the parties on strategies that they should adopt to win the various elections based on the data that we have collected. Mr. Fum, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fum is a coordinator at the Governance Research Bureau. This is Election Watch. <laughs> Welcome back to Election Watch, where political science meets with statistics. I have with me uh, our experts uh, to help us analyze uh, the data. Dr. Kwame Asasante is with the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. And we have the numbers genius, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte from the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science, University of Ghana, Legon. Gentlemen, uh, you're welcome to you. uh, Election Watch. And I must remind you, uh, viewers, that our show is very interactive. You can join the show, uh, the conversation via our social media pages uh, using our hashtag TV3 Election Watch. You may also uh, send us your questions via Zoom. You can uh, using our meeting ID uh, 642164. 5043 and password 751659 and later we will answer your questions live on the show. So today uh, we're taking a look at the general overview of elections 
under the Fourth Republic. So let me quickly introduce you to a brief video on today's subject. Ghana in 1992 took the decision to return to a multi-party democracy after more than a decade of the PNDC, a military regime led by Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins. The presidential election in 1992 was held on November 3. This election was contested by the NDC, led by Jerry John Rawlings and the New Patriotic Party, also led by then university professor and historian Albert Eduwahin. Other contesting political parties included the People's National Convention, PNT, the National Independence Party, People's Heritage Party, and the Eagles Party. The NDC won the election by 58.4% to form government, despite a series of agitations from opposition parties. Parties. Voter turnout was 50.2%. The MPP at the time accused the NDC of rigging the elections and later released a book termed Stolen Verdict, which was a compilation of alleged areas of electoral malfeasance. The party subsequently boycotted the parliamentary election, which was conducted on December 1992. In the 1996 general elections, the NDC had 4,099,460 votes representing. 57.4%, while the MPP led by John Ajekum Kufo had 2,834,878 votes, representing 39.7%. The PNT gathered 211,000. 136 votes representing 3.0% and was led by Dr. Edward Mahama. However, in 2000, there was the first change in government after the country returned to constitutional rule. That election year recorded two rounds. After the second round, John Ajakum Kufo, who once again led the MPP, won with 3,477,152 votes representing 56.5%, while the NDC, under the leadership of the late John Evanta Tamils, had 2,682,071 votes representing 43.4%. The MPP in 2004 retained the seat when John Ajakum Jekum Kufo won the elections. But in 2008, the NDC, which still had the late Atamils as its leader, won the elections after the second round. The MPP's candidate at the time was now President Ekufuado. The electoral dynamics of the country was, however, changed when the then sitting president, John Evans Atamils, died as a result of a short illness. His vice president at the time, John Dramani Mahama, was sworn in into office as the substantive president as the constitution prescribes. John Dramani Mahama, who led the NDC in the 2012 elections, was contested by Nana Ekufuado, who was still the president presidential candidate of the MPP. The NDC won the elections by a margin of 50.7% and the MPP with 47.74%. The MPP subsequently challenged the win at the country's Supreme Court, but after months of hearings, the court reaffirmed the declaration by the Electoral Commission that John Mahama was the winner of that year's elections. The MPP, however, won the 2016 elections with its presidential candidate, Nana Ekufuado, who was contesting the position for the third time. The party won with a percentage of 53.72% and the NDC, led by John Mahama, garnered 44.53% of the vote cast. The MPP once again, led by the current president, Nanel Kufado, is optimistic of retaining the seat come December 7, 2020, while the NDC, led by John Dramani Mahama, is confident of snatching the seat from the MPP. So that was a, a brief video of elections under the Fourth Republic. And I uh, quickly want to start with Dr. Kwame Asasanti. I want you to tell me your uh, very uh, quick review of what we just saw, your perspective. Yes, um, you realize that since the, the Fourth Republic, uh, we've seen a number of elections. We are going through uh, the eighth one. And um, some have been very peaceful. And uh, the 1991 one was, 1992 one was uh, a very controversial one. But at the end of the day, we've been able to right the wrongs. And then we had, you know, very good elections subsequently. Um, as we, you know, 
democracy hinges on elections. So it becomes the duty of everybody who is a believer of democracy mm -hmm. to make sure that what we do in terms of elections hold the key to a successful democracy. And that's all this whole business is about. We're trying to use data by electoral commission and then field data to be able to make sense to our audience so that we carry everybody along uh, with the electoral process. Time and again, when we are going for election, you have difficulties. People come out with all manner of statements and all manner of actions that tend to undermine the credibility of elections. We want to use this forum to set the stage for a beautiful and a clean election mm. so that at the end of the day, we'll be able to carry everybody along. Why are we carrying everybody along? Because the election affects everybody. And one means by which you can do that is the use of science. And that's why you are seeing political science meeting with statistics to be able to take us to the finish line so that at the end of the day, all of us will be happy for a peaceful election. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sasati. So, so uh, Dr. Zigel Nauti, we also want to hear from you what you make of the uh, video we just watched. Yes, um, we, we've actually traversed a lot as a country from 1992 in this Fourth Republic dispensation in terms of elections and how we are deepening democracy. Uh, we realized that when we started uh, as a country, uh, we started with opaque ballot boxes. Then we move on to uh, transparent ballot boxes. Now, uh, we have even improved uh, uh, the registration with biometric features. And this is all to reduce the tension. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it makes the thing credible. And that is how far we have come as a country. That's how far we have come. Dr. Ezekiel Norti and Dr. Kwame Asasanti are here with us throughout this uh, segment. This is Election Watch. In our next segment, we'll be talking about the data and science, where we bring you deeper statistical insights into what the data portray. Stay with us here, right here on Election Watch. <laughs> Welcome back to Election Watch, where we're bringing you deeper statistical insight into the data. Uh, we're still uh, looking at a general overview of elections under the Fourth Republic, and Dr. Uh, Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte are still here with us. So in this segment, uh, is, we, we, we call it the data and science. Uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte, uh, the data is available. Uh, what, what order does it portray? Yes. So... Um we used the previous election certified results in building a model to do the prediction or the forecast for 2020. Mm. However, you realize, you would see that uh, we are now compiling the 2020 uh, electoral uh, rule or the uh, voters yes. register, which we don't have now. Mm. But these predictions, when that is available, will be used to uh, give uh, the estimates. Mm. So currently, we're using the 2016 certified election results right. in right. building the model. Right, that's fine. So uh, let, let's uh, see what we have here now. We so this is average projection of votes accrued by parties in the 2016 in the, elections. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Based on our model. Mm. And then we compare it with the actual their okay. performance. Okay. Right. And before I start showing you uh, what the values are, I will tell you how we built the model. Yes. And then uh, what to expect. Now, we built the model based on the previous elections data, as I have told you. And we obtained estimates for the projections of their average percentage mm. in each of the regions. So, and once you get an average, there should be a corresponding standard deviation. What a standard deviation does is to help you build up 
what we call the margin of error. Mm. So that how far can you go above this average? And how low can you fall below this average? You would use the standard deviation in setting it up. Right. So that is what we did. So we've done average projections of votes accrued by parties. When you look at the screen, on my left corner, we presented the performance of NDC. On the right screen, we have uh, the projections for MPP. So now, this, is, this is an Ashanti region, which itself this is, is, a, this is, is a stronghold Ashanti region, of the MPP. Which, which looks like a stronghold for the MPP. Mm. You would see from the screen that the actual votes that NDC got was a little over 500,000, um, which is the actual. But the estimated vote from the model was supposed to be 591. Mm. Okay? And, and a lower limit of 408 with 1,000, with an upper limit of 774,000. Mm. This really shows that NDC performed below what the model is expecting them to perform. Mm. And as you perform below the model, it means that you are losing the election. Mm. If you perform above, then it means you are winning the election. Interesting. When you look at um, MPP, they got the actual votes were uh, 1.6, a little over 1.6 million, but the estimated was about 1.5 million. Mm. So it means that they actually did better. And their average percentage was 70.2 performance in the Ashanti region. We could move to the other parties, we wow. lumped the other parties together. The reason being that uh, their values were very, very small. small. So mm. we have to put them together. So in the Ashanti region, the other parties' actual votes amounted to 15, about 15,000. But we estimated from the model as 46,000. Their, their lower limit you realize it's a negative, which means that they can actually score zero mm. votes. And the upper limit is 137,000. We would move on to... Now before we move on, yeah, yeah you Real realize that if you look at Ashanti region, uh, you saw the performance of NDC very low yeah. and very high for NPP. The reason uh, being that if you look at Ashanti region, it has always been in favor of the MPP. It is a homogeneous society where most of the people who reside in that constituency or that region are Ashantis, and they always support the MPP. So you realize that they restrict the way and manner in which other parties are able to what, gain votes. Mm -hmm. And if you look at even the smaller parties, they perform poorly in there. Ashanti region has always been in favor of the MPP and that they don't give access to other parties to have a strong uh, performance there. You recall that uh, during the last election, uh, the NDC was saying that, yes, they needed about one million in order to win election in Ghana. But that was something that uh, it was very difficult for them to uh, get. Because if you look at their upper limits, it's about um, 77, 774,000, mm. a little over that. So that's the highest they could go. And the lowest they could go was four, um, over 400,000. So that one million, we're wondering where they were getting that. Mm. If you get this type of analysis, it's able to guide you. Let us remember that what we are doing is that we are giving you a template. So you made data. reference to a one million. Yes. I mean, the yes. NDC has exactly so. embarked on a one so million, one million project, project in Ashanti region. region. And you think yes. that according to the data, that's... Uh, that's that was highly the impossible. Data, that's highly, the data highly impossible. That. The data doesn't impossible support that. Impossible or overambition? Yeah, uh, overly uh, ambitious. Exactly okay. so. Because the, the, the figures on the ground doesn't permit that. Okay. Right. So, uh, uh, Dr. Nate, we, we right. went through the Ashanti region and right. we, were, we were going through to right. uh, so Brunahafo. In the Brunahafo mm -hmm. region, 
the model estimated NDC to get an average percentage of 51.16% with a standard deviation of 7.6%, uh, uh, which translates into estimated average votes of 513,274. But they actually got lower mm -hmm. than that, 442,000. Uh, comparing to their counterparts, NPP, uh, whose average by the model is 45.73%, with a standard deviation of 9%, also translating into 458,000. Mm. But they actually had 531,000, which, meant which they, means they that did they better. did better. Mm. And you will see that the actual votes are in line with the upper limit and the lower limit. Uh, NDCs, NDC could expand their votes to about 633,000, mm. but they got a probable 442,000. In the Bono half. In the Bono half. That's according to the module you created according based on the, the 2016 exactly, figures. Mm. Exactly. And when you look at MPP's performance, they had 531,000 in excess of the estimated average of 458,000, meaning that they are actually doing better than their average. So uh, an upper limit of 641,000, which means that they can even expand to a limit of uh, 641,000. So, so what, what, I, what I need to find out is from this uh, kind of lower limit and upper limit that we're seeing here, was there a clear indication by this that due to the performance, uh, if you look at this, the MVP NDC performed about 50% poorer in according to the module uh, than they were expected to 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 perform did did this show actually then from these figures that they were actually going to lose the election yeah from 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 the data you would see consistently when when i take you through uh, the other uh, right. regions, regions you would see consistently that they performed below their average and we have said that the model when you are getting your average then you are pushing the election into a second round. Mm. But when you perform below your average, it means you are losing the election. Mm. And if you perform above your average, it means then you are winning. winning. Mm. Interesting. Exactly. Mm. We move on to uh, central region. Mm. Central region, um, uh, NDC's performance on the average was 50.06, about half. Uh, MPP slightly lower, 46 percent. However, that translates into an estimated average vote of 475,000. But NDC actually obtained 405,000, which is actually below their, uh, what is expected in the central region. MPP, on the other hand, the 40, 46 percent translated into an average vote of 436,000. However, they were able to make 496,000 extra than the estimated value. It means that they're actually doing better in terms of higher than their average. And once you are in that position, you are in a poor position. So from the central region and the uh, performance of the other political parties, where do we move to? Eastern yes. region. So we move to Eastern region. Which is a stronghold of the Eastern MPP. Eastern region um, is a stronghold for MPP. Mm. And rightly so, NDC's average estimate was 44%, which translates into average votes of 477,000. But they got 379,000 which is shy of the estimated average. Here again, they have dwindled in their performance. NPP, 53.64% on the average, with estimated average votes of 579,000. But they actually outperformed that. Mm. They had 674,000. It means in this region again, NPP has shown their dominance. Interesting. So w w w let's talk a little bit about the lower and upper limits uh, mm. here. In this instance, it means that the highest amount of number of votes any of the two major parties 
will get are what we are showing there the, the, 650,000 exactly. and then 773,000 for the for, NDC for and NDC the MPP and that respectively. The so, any, so anything above that means what exactly? Um, anything above that means that uh, it could be influenced by external forces mm. that needs to be investigated. Yes. So let's move from Eastern region to the Greater Accra region. Mm. The Greater Accra region also plays the role of a swing region. Interesting. Uh, they actually vote in favor of uh, uh, who they think should carry the day. Uh, so here, they are neck to neck. NDC's average is around 49.73%. MPP's average 47.07%. These, uh, uh, these average percentage uh, translates into actual votes of uh, about 1 million for NDC. But they, they actually got 946 thousand. Which was lower than which was estimated. Which was lower than what is uh, estimated. It means that they are performing poorly. When you look at uh, MPP, MPP's estimated average is 961,000, but they got over 1 million votes. In the Greater Accra In the region. Greater Accra, which means that they are in poor position. And when you look at the upper limit... And this was very close to the upper limit, exactly, right? Exactly. Very, very close to the upper limit. When you look at both upper limits and lower limits, they are very close. Very close. It means mm -hmm. that these two dominant parties in the greater Accra are neck to neck. neck to neck. So, so from the greater Accra region, the, we have the Accra region, uh, other smaller parties we, and their yes. performance. And then we'll go we, to the we, northern we'll region. We'll move on to the northern region. Which is a stronghold which of is the a NDC. stronghold of the NDC. And rightly so, the average predi prediction percentage was about 57% for NDC, uh, which translates into estimated votes of 602,000. However, they made only 569,000. Mm. This means that they actually performed below the average. Mm. Looking at MPP, MPP's average performance in the northern region is about 33%, mm. with estimated votes of 351. However, they were able to get 429,000, which is far, far higher than uh, what they were expected to gain. to gain. Here again, it means that NDC, MPP has demonstrated superiority, even in the stronghold of their opponents. So let's move on to the Upper East. Mm. Another stronghold. So, so, so before we go to the upper is, I want us to establish that these are uh, model a uh, model deduced from the 2016 uh, results, certified results certified of the results. electoral commission. And yes. so, I want to ask a question before you continue: whether when the results are going in the way we are showing on the table, and I'm sure election day will be doing that, will it then give the parties? a clear indication themselves if they are watching the numbers that they are winning or losing? Exactly. So this would be a template for them in terms of the percentage and the total number of valid votes cast. You should be able to estimate all these quantities. And so as the values trickle in, as the votes trickle in, you match it against what the model is telling you. If you are getting below the, model, uh, the model's average, you are losing. You're getting around the model's average, you are throwing the election into a second round. Mm. You get above, then you are You're in a winning. poor position. You are, you are likely to get and a And these things plus. also mm. help us to really plan and plan properly. Election is a strategic business. And that you don't just walk to the constituency and begin to talk to people uh, to get votes. No. You need to plan and plan where. There are places that... If you look at this, it guides you that you don't need to waste much time here because your effort will not yield much results. Mm. And that you, you build into areas that you have confidence, that you have the, the capacity to be able to win and win more votes. Remember, the name of the game is what? Numbers. numbers. And you need the numbers to be able to make the needed what, uh, show 
or strength in that area so as to let your candidate cross the finish line by 50% plus one vote. Interesting. So, Dr. Nata, what, what does the numbers say in the Upper East? Yes. So, um, the Upper East, um, here again, NDC stronghold um, happens to be the Upper East. The, their average performance is about 58.69% by the model with the estimated average votes of 273,000. But they actually got 271,000, slightly below the average. Slightly below the average. So they've just kept to the average. Let me put it that way. Interesting. And the MPP average is 25.69% with estimated average votes of 119,000. But they had 157,000. It means that they have actually benefited from the stronghold of their main opponents. Mm. So Volta region. So Volta region. Very interesting. A for very classic the, uh, NDC. NDC stronghold. With an average of 86.7%, uh, which translates into 687,000 votes. Mm. Uh, but they actually had 629,000. Which was below. Which was below. The their average, average, which was below their average. Let's look at uh, MPP's performance in the water region. They average around 10%, which translates into estimated votes of just 86,000 votes. But look at what they did. They had 135,000 votes. Here again, in the stronghold of their main opponents, they are doing marvelously well. Mm. And, and they, they didn't need to win the overall region. All they needed to do was just to, to perform the above their average. Perform above your average, and you are pushing to, to win the election. Mm. Dr. Sassan. And that is why uh, this exercise is very good for uh, people who depend on this for planning, for strategy. Mm. Because it guides you. Uh, if you look at the figures in voter reading, even though it's a stronghold of the NPP, uh, it tells you NDC, that, sorry, of the NDC, uh, of the NDC mm. it tells you that uh, the figures cannot even match Eastern Region, which is a stronghold of what? The MPP. Mm. So if uh, the NDC is planning, they need to plan it in such a way that they'll be able to what, eat into the stronghold of the MPP so as to reduce their chances of what? Uh, clearing them from the political. That's team. the only way. That's the yes. winning formula, really. Mm -hmm. And I must announce uh, that we will uh, be getting on uh, to Zoom and getting some questions coming there from uh, some viewers who are going to join mm -hmm. us uh, via Zoom to uh, ask their questions. And then we will put uh, the questions across to Dr. Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel uh, Norte to answer for us. So, uh, Dr. Asasanti, there was something you were, yes. you were about to say. For yes. If you look at it, when you put them together, the national, when yes. we get to the so national So, we want level. to look at the national. The national, the picture at the national level. The picture at the national level. Mm -hmm. There are things that the parties must take into consideration. We have said, okay, uh, we have said already, and we want to repeat, when you work towards your average, you are pushing the election to a second round. When you work in your upper limit, you are gradually winning the election. Mm. Who knows? You can even win it, what, once. Once. Right. When you work below your average, you are losing the election. And when you look at it, it tells you, the figures here at the national, uh, it tells you that over the years, uh, NDC has been performing better mm. in terms of average performance than the MPP at the national level. Mm. But in terms of what? Uh, the number of votes. Because they are strongholds and the swing uh, areas, uh, there are very few votes there. Uh, they are not able to match up. Other discussions will throw light we'll on throw this. Light. Right. Right. So, Dr. Zikernate, so, uh, so, basically, this is what the model says. Mm. If each of the parties are getting their average throughout, then the model predicts that it would throw the election into a second round because none of them were able to get the 50 percent plus one ndc 48.96 mpp 46.58 percent they are unable to get us to uh, win first round
Mm, so, so it means that we'll be getting to the next segment, which will be the winning formula, where we'll be talking exactly about the numbers. But it means really that it's clear if the, both of the two parties, NDC and MPP, are performing poorly, they should know. And if they are performing better, they should know according to the numbers that are coming in. So I want to ask why we usually hear of allegations of rigging here and there when indeed all of these are, are based on numbers and data, really. The, 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 the simple reason is that uh, election is driven by research. Mm. And more often than not, you realize that the parties, even if they do election, they do uh, research, um, I don't see uh, much effort going in to bring things of this nature out to guide their conduct. Thank God today we are doing something like that. I think they will take advantage of this and be able to go to the field and be guided by things we have said here. We are not saying that this is the magic wand, but it gives you an idea as to how you can perform and perform well. Uh, Dr. Zigonote yes. and uh, Dr. Sassanti, I would like to go quickly to uh, Zoom now and take uh, some question uh, there, and then we'll put that question across to, to you. So, uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, so, your name and uh, what your question is. Good afternoon. My, my name is Nana Kujo. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. I like the analysis, excellent analysis. Um, what I can say is that with a model like this, it means that every party member, everybody, once the results start trickling and everybody can know where the um, election, where the game is going to, if you are performing above your average, you know, hey, I'm winning. If I'm performing low, you know, I'm actually doing bad. Excellent work. Kudos to the doctors. My, I have two questions. My, the first question is, uh, Doctor, um, Dr. Noti, I want to know what is the relevance of um, standard deviation in election analysis. And the second one is that um, from where you sit, do you think Ghana is uh, ready for a female president? What do you say about that? All right. No, no, so I'll put that question to, I'll start with Dr. Ezekiel Norte. Uh, he wants to know what is the relevance of the standard deviation and in election analysis in Ghana. And then Dr. Sasanti will take the second one, uh, whether or not Ghana is ready to have a female vice president on the back of the fact that uh, Professor Jay Nana of Okwajima has been uh, uh, chosen as the running mate of the NDC. Thank you very much, Nana Kuju. Um, I earlier on explained that the standard deviation measures the average spread of how far an estimated average could go below or above that value. So it's just a spread. Now, it is important in, uh, when you gather data, when you compute the average, you need the standard deviation to be able to set up the margin of error. The margin of error allows us to say you can go to this extent and you can go lower to that extent. And that is what the standard deviation helped us to do, to set up the upper limit and the lower limit. Interesting. And uh, so, Nanakojo, uh, that's your answer there. Uh, Dr. Sasanti, you would like to uh, take his second question, whether or not Ghana is ready for a female vice president? It's long overdue. Why am I saying that? We have seen the performance of women in Ghanaian politics, even before independence, right to independence. They've done so well, helped to keep the pace over the years. And uh, all this while, we have not been able to bring them toward the forefront of affairs. I am happy that we are gradually realizing the weaknesses in our political system. And so we are now beginning to nominate women to higher position. Right. Uh, so we have another uh, participant uh, joining us via Zoom with his question. Let's quickly uh, go to him and take his question. And, uh, uh, hello, uh, can you hear me, Anson? Okay. Uh, my question is that uh, a vice presidential candidate, how do they influence the outcome of the election? Of the elections and for? Again, the uh, NDC's vice presidential candidate coming from the central region. Is it going to have any role or influence their, their votes? Right, Anzo, thank you very much. So this is a very important question. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether Dr. Sasanti will answer that, we, we but, could, uh, or Dr. Ezekiel Norte. Mm -hmm. Anzo is asking, 
what role vice presidential nominees or candidates play in the overall election win? Yeah, when you look at the vice president's um, position uh, or the running mate, so to speak, uh, what it means is that he's not part of those names that will go on the ballot box, mm. right, or, or the posters. But uh, the, the, uh, they support the effort of the, ra the, 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 the president or the, fl the flag bearer. Uh -huh. So uh, things that they bring onto the table, uh, one, they look at the popularity of that person. Uh, if it's popular, we are going to get people who will follow that person to cast their good for the party. Not only that. They also uh, will look at what the constituencies the person is coming from. And that is one of the influential uh, uh, factors that in this type of business. If you look at uh, the professor, uh, Jane Nana, you realize that she's coming from Central Region, which is one of the deciding areas of elections in this country. Remember, he also said in his, his speech that he has a relationship with a woman in uh, voter region and all that. So these two constituencies will come and support the effort of what? John uh, uh, Mahama, who comes from what? Northern Ghana. So uh, all in all, we realize that uh, there are a whole lot of things that the running mate will be able to uh, bring to the table. And these are the things that will help us to uh, decide uh, who really get more votes. Uh, Dr. Ezekiel yeah. Nate, you want to say and, something and, to and, and answer this question? And, and to support uh, what Dr. Sa is saying, uh, we will not be able to cast in stone or brick whether she would have an influence or not. We can only do that when we gather qualitative data mm. to support that. To support that, yeah. right. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure before the election, we will do we that. Will, we will do that. And Dr. We'll share it with and Dr. Sasante, uh, thanks very much uh, for... Uh, the answer to Anson's question. Anson, I do hope that your uh, question was uh, appropriately answered. But uh, before we take a break, uh, uh, Dr. Asasanti, there was something else you wanted to clarify uh, before we take the break and get on to the winning formula. Yes, as I was talking about the, the strongholds of the NDC, one of the areas that um, is the stronghold of the NDC is upper um, uh, west mm. and Upper West was created by Rollins, not the East. Not the, the East, East has yeah. been in existence mm. and all that. Mm. Um, the Upper West, Upper East, and uh, Northern Region and Water Region are the strongholds of what the NDC, mm. right? And so um, these things will feature as we look at what the election formula. Right. And MPP also has a Santi Region and that of what. Um, uh, uh, Eastern region. Eastern region, right. right. And uh, these things work things so that you really understand the winning formula. Right. Uh, this is uh, Election Watch. I'm Stephen Enti. We'll take a break here. We'll return. We will now uh, talk about the winning formula, what the winning formula really is. Uh, this is where you like to stay with us and uh, get through to the end. Welcome back to Election Watch. Our election Watch is brought to you by your Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. It's now time for us to give you the winning formula. Dr. Ezekiel Norte, mm. per the numbers that you have uh, demonstrated, what is the winning formula? Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, as we saw in the earlier presentation, we said that MPP, if would uh, MPP would get their average throughout, then they would make nationally an average of 46.58%. Now, we will need to take the difference between 50% and 46.58% and multiply that by the total valuables cast. Mm -hmm. And that would make up the 50% plus one. And this translates into uh, they needing 372,000 votes. So as they perform above their average, then they will be counting. They will be counting. 
Once they go past this, they have won the election. Interesting. Interesting. Similarly, NDC had a slight edge over MPP. Their average nationally was 48.96%. So when you take the difference between the 50% and that margin, you multiply that by the total value votes cast, which will make up the 50%, then you add one, and you round that up, and that gives you, um, in terms of vote, 113, 165 votes. Mm. And so it is, from here, it is much easier for NDC to cross the 50 plus one than MPP. Interesting. But that would depend on their performance. Mm. In so these are, these the are projections based on the performance exactly. for 2016. And it depends on mm. also other factors, such as what? The qualitative factors. The economy, infrastructure, your track record, uh, health issues, and all that. When you put these things together, they confirm or deny this. But whatever it is, there's a, a beautiful uh, work plan that will really help the parties to be within what? The, the, the bounce, mm. so that when you are performing well, you yourself from the word go, you know we are doing well. If you are not doing well, uh, the results, you don't need electoral commission to come and announce anything. Everything, you see it from the word go, and you make a decision on that. Interesting. Dr. Ezekiel Nalte. Yeah. So, um, uh, my, my final comments are that this should be used by both parties as a template. A template. You look at your average performance in terms of uh, upper limit, lower limit, what is your actual? Is your actual around your average or above the average or below the average? All would have an input into how much you will require to go beyond the 50 plus one, to win one touch. Mm, interesting, so, so the thing, what I wanted to ask, it just came to my mind is that, is there a scenario where this winning formula, uh, the MPP will be getting their winning formula. Uh, they will be getting the average of uh, 372,000, and the NDC could also be getting same. That will be neck to neck situation. But or it doesn't work like that. But that, that, that is going to be very difficult because they are feeding their values by the same voter turnout. So as NDC benefits, is to the detriment of MPP. And that's MPP benefits mm. to the detriment, the detriment of, of the NDC. So are you, do, you, do you mean that the NDC only needs 113,000 to win elections? Yes. If they can keep to their averages in all the regional mm. uh, uh, values that we have uh, come out with, then they need only mm. So, So where is the 113,000 coming from? Yes. So the 113 means that they are either people who either two would have voted for MPP, they are getting them, or the other parties. Mm, Dr. Sassati, anything else you want to add to this? Yes. The other votes is that you need to satisfy that first requirement. Make sure that your average performance, you maintain it. And once you maintain, tell, you are telling yourself that you are moving into what, the second round. So when you go beyond, you are making you know, savings, if you like, you are making savings towards reducing your effort of working more in order to cross. Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. And they, they, they can get a vote from better performance over the average or feed into the strongholds of other parties or deprive smaller parties the, okay. some of the votes mm -hmm. in order to get these votes. And this is what we, this whole business is about. It's about strategy. And our other discussions will look at the strategies to go into this thing. Right. Uh, so in a layman's terms, what it means is that all the two major political parties will need to uh, perform better in their average. And then in addition to that, they need 372,000 for MPP to win and 113,165 for NDC uh, to win. Very excellent clarifications there, Dr. Sasante. Your closing remarks uh, before we wrap up. As we have already said, we are giving this thing as a template, a guideline for the political parties to work with. Uh, let us not lose sight on the fact that we need the qualitative figures to add up. 
to be able to predict who wins the election and the person who will lose the election will be able to know out of that. And we need to take into consideration the average performance, your upper limits, your lower limit, if the parties are to make strong show in this election. Once they are able to take these things uh, into consideration and plan well, I think it will good, give them a good value for their money and everybody will be happy. All right, everybody will be happy. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte and Dr. Sasanti, for uh, joining us on today's election watch. Next week, we will be bringing you a simulation to show you how to win the swing regions and the strongholds. Make a date with us, and the time is Sunday, uh, 4 p.m. every Sunday. I'm Stephen Enti, and uh, thanks to the, the Governance Research Bureau for partnering Election Command Center to bring you Election Watch. Have a great evening.